I'm Michelle from Tile Much Sea Paper Blooms. Welcome back to part two of the How to Build a Bouquet series. If you missed part one, go back and watch that now. I'll link it up above for you. And in that video, we ran through all the different types of flowers and the colours we were going to use to build our bouquet using all of the tutorials that I've brought to you so far. So if you've missed any of the actual tutorials, I'll put links for those in the description box below. So you can go back and make your paper flowers from there. And hopefully you followed along with part one of the series and you've got a good idea of your colour palette and the flowers that you're going to make. So the next step is to figure out what we're going to do with them. So obviously you can just make your flowers and put them in the vase and hope for the best. So most of the time, if you don't at least have a rough idea of what your bouquet is going to look like, you're going to end up making lots of additional flowers, making them the wrong heights and having to adjust them. Um, you might not have enough flowers, you might have the wrong types. So it's something that comes with practice. Obviously, when you've been doing it a while, you probably have a rough idea and you can kind of wing it and it'll be fine. <laughs> but when you're getting started, it can be so tempting to just make your bouquets, pop them in a vase, and then you look at it and think, why does that look awful? Why is that not working how everybody else sells their bouquets? So the main thing is that they planned ahead and they thought about their bars. So today I want to talk to you about these guys. Um, there are all sorts and sizes and shapes and vases available. All kinds of designs and colours. On that front, it really is personal preference. What I would say that is really important is the size and the shape of your bars. We're not going to talk too much about the colours today because that's just personal preference. You know, if you want a bright blue vase or a green vase or a clear vase, whatever it is, it really doesn't matter. So to start with, we're going to use these clear glass vases. So I just want to show you the, the difference in these three vases. So they're all glass, so there's no other distinguishing features like bright colours or textures or things like that. But we've got one here which has got this like narrow neck to it and then it kind of fans back out again at the top. There's this one which is more of like a uh, hurricane vase type one, you, a lot of people use these with candles inside them. Obviously that's got quite a wide neck to it, it's not as tall but it's got a wide neck so that's going to need a lot more flowers. And then also just your bog standard glass water bottle. This has got a really narrow neck to it so although it's tall it's going to get a lot of height to your flowers. You're not going to get many flowers in there because there's only a very narrow opening. So your first instinct might be to focus on the colour of your vases. Um, and yes, that is important, but you really do need to focus on the shape and the size of them as well. Because obviously all three of these are similar height, but they're going to produce very different bouquets. So you're going to have a lot more flowers in the first two vases because the neck is wider than you will in a bottle like this. Same thing with bud vases. This is one of the bud vases I use quite a lot. This works really well with just one or two flowers in it. And you wouldn't think it would make much of an impact doing that, but it really does. And obviously it's quite short, so it's only a few inches high. So that's gonna affect the height of your flowers. So you could be making flowers that are the full length of your floral wire. And actually you only need them to be half a wire length and you're just wasting wire and floral tape by making them full height. So things like that are worth paying attention to now before you get started, just so that you're prepared and you know what you're gonna make. Now obviously if it all goes wrong and you change your mind and you wanna make a different bouquet in a different vase, it's not the end of the world. You can always swap and change them. So even if you cut your stems to be quite short like this hibiscus is, as long as you've got a longer one, there's ways you can fix that. So if we wanted to use these in a tall vase, for example, I will show you this in detail in a later episode, but you can basically attach them together with a bit of tacky glue and some floral tape. Then that gives you the height so you don't have to worry about the fact that one is a lot shorter than the other. So obviously there's ways we can fix it and we'll go through those together. But for now, let's just run through a few different vase types, shapes, um, and I'll just show you some of the ones I've got around my house to show you the different, um, the different options really. So as I say, try not to focus on the colours because that's not really the most important thing here. And that is also why a lot of them are glass, so that you are looking at the shape and nothing else. <laughs> so these first three vases are all quite big. And although the two at the back are different heights, they're all very similar. And the reason I've grouped them together like this is they've all got a similar size opening at the top to the actual body of the vase as well. So they're either straight or there's only a very slight incline on them. So what that means is you're going to need a lot of flowers to fill each of these vases. They're also going to need to be very tall, particularly for the two vases at the back. You're going to need very tall stems. You might even find that your floral white isn't tall enough, so you might have to join a few together or put some kind of filler into the base of the vase just to make it stand up a bit higher. The other thing to be aware of with a straight vase like this is that your flowers are going to end up sticking pretty much straight upright. 
So the shape of your display is going to be very different to some of the other styles of vases. So I'm just going to pop a few examples on the screen here now, showing the kind of display you could get from this kind of shape of vase. Now obviously the fact we've got wire in our flowers means you can bend them to create different shapes, but you might find it looks a little bit weird if you're bending them too much. There is an advantage though of having a straight vase like this, because it means that actually only the very top of the flowers are going to be visible. So you don't need to worry too much about putting any leaves onto your stems, particularly anything that is part way down the stem you're not going to notice it and actually it might just get in the way in the vase so I wouldn't bother with those. And also for any kind of foliage as well, you only really need to focus on the top few inches of the stem because the rest of it is going to be hidden. So from that point of view it's quite good because although you're going to need more flowers and more stems to fill your vase, you don't actually need to put as much work into each one. So this next shape is more of your traditional style of vase, which might not be your favourite from a design point of view because they aren't as modern as some of the other shapes. However, in terms of creating a nice bouquet, if you want a large display, this is like your best friend. Because it has this narrow neck towards the top of the vase and then it fans out at the top, what that does is actually put all your stems at an angle so they'll start to lean on the sides of the neck. So it starts to create like a wider spread of flowers and gives it a really nice shape and rather than everything just sticking upright they'll stick out at different angles and then as you add more and more flowers it will start to curve over the top so you'll see here as I'm adding more and more flowers they're kind of sitting naturally up against the side of the neck of the vase so I'm not necessarily placing those in any particular place that's just how they start to fall naturally so particularly if you're new to flower arranging, then it's a really good idea to use this style of vase because it just takes out some of the hard work for you. So if you see how they're sitting, all I'm doing is kind of roughly equally spacing them around the vase and they're already starting to create this really nice shape. And then you can see when you view the flowers from the top, they've already started to form like almost a circle shape from above. And then also when you look at it from the side, you can straight away see how it's going to curve over the top. So you'll start lower at one side and then it'll start to curve over the top and that's quite a natural shape and that's very easy to achieve without too much effort. So this kind of style of vase is great for that if you want a large kind of traditional shaped bouquet that's quite curved and that's quite top heavy. To kind of break away from that uniform shape you can have the odd unruly stem that just kind of breaks away and like falls down over the top of the vase and that gives quite a nice effect too. If you want a display that's a little bit smaller, or maybe it's going to be used as a centerpiece on a table, and then something like this would work really well. These are quite small, they're only maybe about 5 or 6 inches high, so you don't need to worry too much about the height of the display. But the good thing about this size of bars is you can either have just a few flowers in it, or you can actually still get quite a good number in there as well and either will generally work well. The shape is going to be the difference here. So if you want to use a lot of flowers, then something like this square shaped vase would work well. However, you'd be able to get away with a lot less flowers in this ball vase. Um, again, it's the same kind of principle as before with the narrow neck, because it kind of goes in and then out again, even though it's very small, that's going to make the stems lean up against it at an angle and again, create this nice shape. So if you can, I would recommend going for something more like the round one rather than the square one. Now there are exceptions to this. If you're going to be using things like Oasis as a filler material, which we'll get onto in a little bit, then you could stick your stems in this at an angle and obviously it doesn't really matter too much. So it depends what filler material you're planning to use, if any. This next shape is also really good if you're having a larger bouquet. This is going to work with most flower bouquets. The good thing about this style of vase is that you can go all out and create a huge display with loads of flowers in it. You can create something that's really top heavy, you can create things that are a bit more unruly and you might have some stems breaking away off to the side. Maybe they flow down over the edge of the vase and point downwards. There's all sorts of different styles you can create with this kind of shape of vase, but at the same time you can also get away with just having a few in there as well. You don't need to have too many flowers in this style. The only thing to bear in mind is this particular vase is quite tall, so you obviously need to make sure that you have enough height on your stems, but you can get this shape of vase in smaller sizes as well and then that wouldn't really be an issue. I would say with something like this you are going to want to have a minimum of maybe five or six flowers and then some foliage and maybe some small filler flowers. So you probably would have a slightly larger bouquet in this but as I say if you had a smaller version of this shape you could get away with less flowers. And then finally probably my favourite style of vase is a bud vase. Now 
you'll know if you've made even just a couple of these paper flowers that they're very time consuming. So the last thing you want is to have to commit to making a huge bouquet with 10 or 20 or more flowers in it just to be able to display a creation that you've made. Obviously if you're new to this you want to make one flower at a time, display it and be very proud of what you've created. You're not probably going to be ready to make 20 or 30 flowers before you can put them out on display. And to be honest, even when you've been doing it a while, sometimes you just want to make one flower, spend an afternoon on it, and then be able to put it out for the world to see, or to be able to give it as a gift to someone. So I absolutely love bud vases for that, because generally they work really well with just one or maybe two flowers in them. Quite often I'll put a large flower, like a peony or something like that, that works perfectly in these vases. And then I'll maybe put a little bit of a foliage stem, Nothing major, they don't need a lot to go with them. Just something that will stand and rest in the vase. And that in itself actually creates quite a lot of impact. And actually that's something I love to give as a gift because it doesn't take me too long to make it. But it's still enough of an impact that whoever's receiving it is very impressed and they actually can't believe they're receiving this handmade gift. So I would really recommend bud vases for any kind of gifts like that. The other good thing with them is if you shot on wire, you obviously don't need that much wire. You don't need generally the rest of the materials as well, so it's a bit more cost effective. And bud vases work really well grouped together as well, so you can make one, and then come back at a later date and make another one and just sit them side by side. I really like to group bud vases together. So if you remember previously we talked about the rule of thirds, so if you have three slightly different bud vases all kind of grouped together, that works really, really well. And obviously then you're only having to make a few flowers, but you're still making quite a lot of impact with that group of bud vases. And obviously I'm showing you a group of vases here that are all quite different. Particularly we've got the water bottle in the back, which you might think of being very different to the bud vase right at the front, for example. But although it's a lot taller, it's got a very narrow neck to it. And so because it's got that narrow neck, that's holding everything in place. So again, you could get away with just a couple or even just one really nice flower in that vase. Because it's got the narrow neck, it's not gonna look lost in there. And I think that's what makes all the difference. It's the size of the neck that you need to pay attention to. If you had the same vase, but you chopped the neck off, so you've just got like a straight open neck, that's not gonna work with just one flower in it. It, it looks lost. It looks unfinished and it's not gonna hold it in place. But that neck holds everything in place and it just makes it all come together and look like it's intentionally like that. So that's the key when you're looking at a bud vase. Don't necessarily think of the height of it or the size of it, more so the neck and the, the clue is in the title that it's a bud vase that is designed for a single bud. <laughs> so any of these that you can see on screen now will work great as a bud vase. Obviously the first style of vase we talked about was the straight vase. And if you see at the front left, I do have like a jam jar style vase here, which obviously is straight. Now how that works is going to depend on the size of it. So if you've got a large straight vase, like the first ones we looked at, then that obviously is going to need a lot of flowers. Something like this small jar, you're going to get away with it more as a bud vase rather than a straight necked vase. And that's just because of the scale of it, because this is actually really small. It's only about four or five inches tall, and it's probably about an inch and a half in diameter. So it's very small, and that's why that works as a bud vase rather than as a larger vase. So obviously your scale is going to have an impact as well, but I mean, you can just use your common sense here. A small, tiny vase is not going to hold a huge bouquet, and equally, you're not going to want a very small flower on its own in a very large vase. So. Just use a little bit of common sense. Vases can overlap between categories, that's fine, it's just going to be whatever works. And also this is just a guide as well, so you, you might find you really like the look of loads of flowers crammed into a really small vase, or you might like the look of it being more open in a much larger vase. It's all personal preference. These are all just little tips that might help you when you're picking your vase and trying to think about what your flowers are going to look like in them. And obviously I'm just trying to save you a little bit of time, particularly in the early days when you're getting started. Once you've been doing this a while, you'll probably find you have a huge collection of vases that you keep buying. So you'll always have a lot of vases on hand and you'll also start to build up a supply of paper flowers as well because as you make new ones, you keep improving. There's always more flowers than you know what to do with. So you'll probably always have quite a few around that you can try them in different vases and test how they turn out. And I think that's also a really good way to learn as well. So if you do have a handful of flowers you've already made, 
just try them in different vases and just see what they look like and what effects you can create. That is the beauty of having them, that you can mix and match them all the time. Like it really doesn't matter if you change it every week if you want to. So just try some different ones in different vases, try different sizes and different types, like we talked about the necks and things like that, and just see what effects you can create and what appeals to you. And then when you find this kind of shape that you roughly like, even if the flowers are all the wrong colours and don't go together, you can then go on and say, right, okay, I need to make X number of flowers in these colours, and that's going to work in this vase. A few other things that might help you in planning your vases are to think about the filler material. So you don't necessarily need to have anything. It really depends on the style of vase that you pick. So if you choose one of the glass vases like this one, obviously everything inside is going to be visible. That includes all of your wire stems, which are not always the prettiest. It depends how much care you've taken when you've been making your flowers. So that is another thing. If you know you're going to have clear glass bars and no filler, put a bit more effort into making your stems look nice when you're making your flowers. So if you're not going to have any filler in your bars, this is not going to hold any flowers in place. So you're going to need to put a lot of flowers to fill this opening to make sure everything stays put and doesn't move around. Or you're going to have to make the flowers into almost like a wedding bouquet and wrap some string or some ribbon or some things, hold the stems in place and then just pop that in the vase. The problem with that is then, because it's a wide opening, it's gonna move around a lot. So I wouldn't recommend a vase like this for something like that. Maybe one of this shape that has the narrower neck, so that's gonna hold things and it can rest on this top lip. So that'd be good if you have like your wedding bouquet that you want to recreate. You can make the actual bouquet with the same handle as you had and then just rest that in the vase. The other alternative is you could try different fillers. So filler material really depends on your personal preference and the style of whatever space you're designing this for. So whether it's your home, or a wedding, or an event. Um, so there's different things you can play with. You could use polystyrene foam balls. I quite like to use crinkle cut craft paper. I know some people use sand or pebbles. Uh, glass beads is another one, although that does tend to be a little bit more dated nowadays. I actually created a Pinterest board with some ideas of different filler materials for you. Um, I'll link that in the description box below so you can go over and check that out. The other thing you can do is to use a frog or chicken wire. Now I would recommend doing that in a vase which is not clear, so you want something more solid. And a frog has basically just got lots of little holes in it that you can pop the stems into and it's going to hold them up at different angles. There will still be a bit of movement but generally you can arrange your bouquet in the right kind of position. You can also do DIY versions with chicken wire. Um, I do recommend wearing gloves for that because it can get quite painful otherwise. Um, but you can bend the chicken wire to form a shape, pop that inside your vase and then you can stand your stems into the wire. Personally I'm not a huge fan of that just because I undercut my hands all the time. So I'm going to focus on the safer methods, let's say. A lot of people also use Oasis and like the foam material. So you would just cut a piece that's the right size for your vase, pop that inside and then just push the stems into it and that's going to hold them really well. Now, in an ideal world, that would be the easiest way of doing things because nothing's going to move. However, there's a couple of things just to pay attention to that. Uh, one, it's quite expensive to buy. So if you're doing a few bouquets, that might not be the best option for you. Um, and the other thing is, it's really bad for the environment. So as far as I'm aware, the Oasis materials generally are not recyclable. And they're great when you are using fresh flowers and you need something that's going to hold the water. But for our purposes, we really don't need that. So if you find it easier to use that, go ahead. But personally, I prefer to use the more sustainable things. So my choice is almost always the crinkle cut craft paper. Um, I do really like craft paper, it's part of my branding for my business and it goes well with my home decor so it's an easy choice for me but I also really like the way it holds all of my stems in place. You'd be surprised actually how stiff you can get the vase to be just by packing in a lot of crinkle paper um, and it's relatively cheap to get hold of, it works for other things like packaging and stuff as well so if you wanted to buy it in bulk you can keep it in for other things, it's just an alternative to like bubble wrap and things like that. So yeah, personally that's my preference, but there is no right and wrong, whatever you find works best. So I suggest getting a few different materials and have a play and see what works best for you. And also make sure you're considering that in line with the vase you're choosing. If you're not going to see it inside a solid vase, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. I also want to encourage you to try looking around your house just to see what else you have that could be used as a vase or your non-traditional things. Some jars can be really decorative, like this one I think was a sauce um, and it's just got a nice like diamond pattern on it. 
you just need to give it a clean to get the sticky labels off, but that would make a really nice bud vase. Another one that you might not consider is olive oil. <laughs> this is an olive oil bottle. So it does have the olive embossed at the top, I quite like that. And the dark green glass is a bit different as well. And that makes quite a nice vase if you just want something small. You don't want too big a display, and it's free. <laughs> of course, the other thing, you can always DIY these as well. So if you wanted to, you could spray this a different color, add things to it. There's a whole host of different options for DIYing vases as well. And then, of course, the one everyone loves, the mason jar. This was from some kind of jam or something. Um, but it makes a perfect little bud vase. And you can just stand in one or two flowers in there and you've got yourself a display. So I hope you found that useful and that you've got an idea of what vase to use for your display now. In part three of this series, we're gonna move on to actually making our flowers now because we've got most of the planning done, we've got the colors, and now we've got our vase. So the next stage is just to make everything. And then once we've done that, we can go on to arranging our displays. So we're over halfway there now, we've, we've done all the hard work. So thank you for watching along to this point. If you've liked this video and the videos in the series so far, then please do hit the thumbs up button. And I would love it if you're not already, if you could subscribe to my channel because it really does help me out and it means I can keep bringing you more tutorials like this. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'd also love to hear any feedback from you in the comments box below. All of the tutorials that we've used so far will be linked in the description box too, so if you've missed any of those, you can go back and watch them too. So I'll see you back here very soon for part three. Thank you for being here to celebrate life's special moments with me.